people, nothing to worry about, plus nothing you can do about it anyway. But the moon is getting farther from the earth every day. Now, kids, this is going to be complicated, so listen carefully. The moon is getting farther from the earth every day. So that means that it used to be closer. How many can figure this out with no help at all? Okay. Well, if you bring the moon in closer, you start to create a problem because the moon causes the tides. Now, you folks in Knoxville probably don't worry about the tides, but in Pensacola, you worry about the tides. See, if the moon was closer, the tides would be higher. There's a law called the inverse square law. If you brought the moon in to one-third the distance, you take the one-third, flip it over, and square it, it's nine times the gravitational pull. If you run all the math on this, you'll find out the moon and Earth would have been almost together 1.4 billion years ago. Walt Brown says 1.2 billion years ago is the max lifespan for Earth and moon. Well, if the moon was whizzing around just above the surface of the Earth, that explains what happened to the tall dinosaurs. They got mooned. Oh. Comets are flying around through space, but comets are constantly losing material. I mean, stuff blows off the tail of a comet. You can't just keep losing, okay? Pretty soon it's gone. You know, it's kind of like your checkbook. See, if your outgo exceeds your income, your upkeep will be your downfall every single time. Well, these comets are always losing material. That's something you just can't keep doing forever. Most astronomers say comets can't last more than about 10,000 years. Okay, well then, I have a question. Why do we still have comets out there? They should all be gone by now. I mentioned in a seminar years ago that comets is an indication that the solar system is less than 10,000 years old, and an atheist went home and devoted an entire website against me, anti-Hovind website. There are now over a 1,000. One guy told me there's closer to 2,000 anti-Hovind websites. I'm so proud of myself. Well, this one scoffer on his website said, Hovind, don't you know that a Dutch astronomer back in 1950, his, his name was Jan Oort, he proposed, it means he hoped, he wished, he prayed, that there was a great shell of comets out there and new ones keep coming in to replace the old ones that are burning out. So his, his, he said, the reason we still have comets is because new ones are replacing the ones that are burning up. They called it the Oort cloud of comets. He said this Oort cloud is 50,000 astronomical units away. Well, if you don't know what an astronomical unit is, it's the distance from the sun to the earth. That's one astronomical unit. It's pretty hard to see Pluto without a really good telescope. And Pluto's only 39 astronomical units away. You're never going to see a comet at 50,000 astronomical units, that's for sure, okay? Nobody's ever seen this Oort cloud. Oort never saw the Oort cloud. The whole thing's based on a mathematical mistake. There is no Oort cloud. Even Carl Pagan, a Sagan, said, Many scientific papers are written each year about the Oort cloud, its properties, its origin, its evolution, yet there's not a shred of direct observational evidence for its existence. There is no Oort cloud. But this scoffer on his website said, Hovind, if you want to use the comet argument, you know, to prove the Earth is young, it's up to you to prove, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that the Oort cloud and other sources don't exist. Wait, 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 wait. How would you prove the non-existence of something? Wouldn't I have to be all places at the same instant to prove something doesn't exist? Mm -hmm. What he's trying to do here is called shifting the burden of proof. The liberals do it to us all the time, and we fall for it. I'll show you how easy it is to do. Okay? Suppose I said, watermelons are blue on the inside until you cut the skin. Prove I'm wrong. Mm, that's called shifting the burden of proof. That'd be pretty hard to do, wouldn't it? As soon as you cut the skin, so, see, it turned red. I was right. It was blue a second ago. <laughs> he says, I have to prove there's no Oort cloud. Now, wait, 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 Dave. Here's what we know. We know we have comets. We know they don't last more than about 10,000 years. We know the Bible says the earth is 6,000 years old. I don't have a problem with comets. But he wants to make it look like I have a problem with comets when he's the one who's got the problem. The Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God. It's interesting. Evolution theory has the sun and stars evolving before the earth. The Bible says God made the earth before the sun and stars. 
Everything about the evolution theory is backwards to the Bible. Every single thing, absolutely backwards. These theories don't match. Everything's backwards. The Bible says man brought death into the world. Evolution says death brought man into the world. The Bible says God created man, and evolution says no, man created God. These theories are polar opposite. People say, couldn't God use evolution to create? Well, he could have, but it's not the God of the Bible, that's for sure. The God that would use evolution is cruel, wasteful, and retarded. It's not a God you'd want to pray to, that's for sure. Cover more on that on video 7 of the Blue Series of Tapes back there. The psalmist said, when I consider thy heavens... By the way, heavens is plural. We get into that more on video 2. He said, when I consider... Kids, you do yourself a favor once in a while to shut off that TV and go outside and consider the heavens. Go see what God has done. The psalmist said, while I was musing, the fire burned. The word muse means think. Think. The Bible uses the word twice. Think. Now, English is a pretty interesting language, you know. A theist is a person who says he believes in God. If you put the letter A in front of a word, it means the opposite. So an atheist is a person who says he does not believe in God. Muse means to think. You got it. Ah, muse means literally to not think. Did you know we've got entire parks where you can pay money and go do that? They're called amusement parks. Mm -hmm. The place to not think. He said, When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon, the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him? You know, it's interesting. A person that spends his time considering what God has done is just not impressed with what man can do. And some of you parents ought to go home and look in your kid's bedroom. And if what you see all over the wall are pictures of sports heroes, you listen carefully. You're training your kids to meditate on what man can do, not what God can do. And his brain, his thinking process is going to be about that deep. You know, the depth of his understanding is, wow, he threw the ball through the hoop. Oh, <laughs> who's going to care in a thousand years? Who's going to care in five years? Does anybody know who won the stupid bowl, Super Bowl five years ago? Does anybody care? doesn't matter, does it? All those grown men out there fighting over that one ball, and they can all afford to go buy their own. I mean, it's not sinful. It is just dumb to pay a guy $5 million to carry a pig bladder down a cow pasture through some plumbing. I... <laughs> it's not going to last, folks. Think about things that are going to last forever, like what God has done. Okay, Meditate on that. The Bible says, Speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee. The earth is like a big magnet. Now, magnets always lose their strength. The earth's magnet has lost 10% of its strength in the last uh, 150 years. That means, of course, it used to be stronger since it's getting weaker, and it cannot be more than 25,000 years old. Just the earth's magnetic field decline limits it to less than 25,000 years, and that also means carbon dating can't work. I'll give you a few examples here. The lower leg of a mammoth <clears throat> dated 15,000 years old, but the skin was 21,000. One part of a mammoth is 29,000 years old. Another part's 44,000. You talk about a slow birth. <laughs> Cover more on carbon dating on video number seven and all the serious problems with that. But the textbooks will say, well, yes, the magnetic field's getting weaker, but that's because it's reversing, okay? It's a pattern of reversals. No, there are no magnetic reversals in the magnetic field at the bottom of the ocean. We cover that on video 6. This is all part of another theory called Pangea. How many have ever heard of Pangea before? That all the continents used to fit together. Well, I bet they didn't tell you they shrank Africa nearly 40% to make them fit, did they? Did they tell you they took out all of Mexico and Central America? Señor, ¿qué pasa? ¿Dónde está Mexico, Panama, Costa Rica, Guatemala? And they don't, they don't tell you what I think ought to be obvious to a kindergartner. <clears throat> did you know... If you take the water out of the oceans, you will notice there is dirt underneath. People say, Hoven, do you think the continents were ever connected? I say, well, what do you mean? They're still connected. I mean, like right now, you know, it's just the low places are full of water, that's all. What do you mean, were they connected? Hello, they're still connected. 
<laughs> what a dumb theory. We cover more on that on video number six about Pangaea, uh, what's called the Hovind theory. But the Earth is spinning about a thousand miles an hour at the equator, but the Earth is slowing down. The Earth actually slows down about a thousandth of a second every day. The Earth slows down. Astronomy Magazine ran an article in 1992. They said, Earth's rotation is slowing down. June will be one second longer than normal. We will have a leap second. Leap second? Yep. They have to have a leap second about every year to year and a half. Because the Earth is slowing down. 